Are you struggling at home right now? Are you parenting your kids and teaching your kids? We want to help. My name is Bill Richardson. I'm an administrator here at Koinonia in the Loomis office up here in Northern California. I have been working here for about 25 years. This is Benetta Baki. I'm Benetta. <laughs> and my husband and I have um, fostered for 28 years and then I went to work for Koinonia. We want to talk to you guys today about how not to hate your kid at the end of COVID. In the middle, hopefully you didn't hate them before. Bennett and I want to put together a series of topics that we think could help you during this time. And so today we're going to talk about sharing control. And oh my goodness, is it our instinct to control our kids? And isn't it the kid's instinct to control us or maintain control? Control is this hot commodity. It's this, it's this, I will maintain control or I will die trying to keep that control. From a professional, from an experiential perspective, we wanted to help you and give you something tangible to work with right now while you're working with your kid. And that's why I asked Benetta to come in because she's been there. Her and her husband have been through it. They had to learn the hard way to share the control. I haven't had to, to do as much teen work. I have parented my own kids and I give a lot of advice to foster parents about raising teens. Now, how would you share control with one of your kids? As a helicopter mom, I like to control things, I like to keep them neat and tidy. Um, but with 68 kids that's gone through my house, I had to let that go pretty early. They had a child, let's call him Ronnie. We were driving along and he goes, you know, I don't do school. As a parent, I need kids to go to school. I need the time off. <laughs> I need my break. Unlike you poor people with um, COVID, you know, there's no break there. <laughs> anyway, so um, Ronnie goes again. I don't go to school and I'm driving thinking, hmm, I don't go to school. What am I gonna do with that? And I said, well, that's okay. There's school every day. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. I don't do homework. I said, oh. Well, let me know when you do homework because then you can stay up till 9.30. And those who choose not to do homework, they go to bed about 7.30. So please let me know when you, um, when you do your homework. And you know, he always did his homework. He always went to school. He ended up being a great wrestler. Um, so you never know, just a simple little statement. And he did come back, you know, after he went out and did his little thing and he said, um, you know, I always wondered why you told me I didn't have to go to school and I didn't have to do my homework and that it was a choice. So we got to talk about how, well, it, he, he was setting up an argument. I knew he was setting up that argument for me to, because most parents are gonna fight that. Yes, you're gonna go to school. And so we, we did talk about that. And he said, well, he really ended up enjoying school. Yeah, giving, giving away a little bit of control uh, allows us to have the ability to not argue, right. which, which is the biggest, uh, gosh, if I could just get parents to stop arguing, to stop debating with the kids, they really ultimately don't have control. I mean, we have the ultimate control as the parent. Um, the argument itself can be something for the child to feel in control over because they can get you to argue. They can push your buttons and suddenly we're arguing about something. They love the argument. It feeds some sort of need for them. And then we really just lose control in the situation because now they're controlling our emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they can even change the subject in the middle and you're not even arguing yeah. about going to school. Now I'm arguing about when's bedtime. Yeah. Yeah. And they love that. And so, so let's bring this back to COVID. So we're, here we are, you got your kids at home, you know, you got the professionals who have to zoom in, right? Because now we can't- At a certain time. Yeah, we can't necessarily go to the home as easily. We, you guys can't come into the office as easily. The therapy sessions are different. Everything's different. And so you're sitting at home, you got your kid, and the kid says, I'm not gonna do my homework. So uh, maybe a good choice to respond could be, hey, you know what, you're welcome to do your homework now or you're welcome to do your homework in 15 minutes. What would you prefer? And so I'm okay with either option, but now the child has a sense of, oh, well, I'm gonna choose 
15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or I'm going to choose the later bedtime. All right. You know, kid, kids that brush their teeth, well, well, they get dessert, right? So rather than arguing about these topics, we're finding ways to share control in the moment so that you can maybe not argue. In fact, my favorite one-liner that we use in our house is, I love you too much to argue. You know, I mean, that's amazing yeah. for us yeah. because all of a sudden the arguments left our house. In fact, my wife used it on me. It <laughs> kind of worked there too. And, and I love to debate. I love to argue. And what I realized was our house calmed down. Our, our family became okay with not having to debate every single topic. Right. Um, another example could be the remote control. The kids would argue over the remote control. <laughs> and rather than me running in and saying, hey, buddy, whose fault and whose turn? No, no, whose turn? Right. I walk in, I grab the remote, and I leave the room. And guess what? Kids are too lazy to get up and turn the, the channel, channel on their own. <laughs> right. And so they just gave up and found something else to do. And I didn't say a word. And I was thinking, I have a, a friends that are educators, and they're having difficulties as an educator on the other side of the camera. And um, I was thinking, even with the kids who, maybe they don't want to get in front of the camera or in front of the screen. I, I don't want to look at the teacher. She makes me angry or whatever reasoning. Um, there could even be shared control there. You can sit in the blue chair or the brown chair. Where are we going to sit to watch our teacher? It doesn't have to be at a desk, right? Mm -hmm. Or a kitchen table. Mm -hmm. Change it up a little bit so that the child is engaged in choosing where to sit and excited about where to sit mm -hmm. rather than the argument or the mm -hmm. unshared control. Yeah, and it brings a sense of security, self-worth. These kids, are, are, especially with the kids we work with in foster care, they're dying for a sense of control because they feel out of control. Right. And so as you give them control, they start to feel confident. They start to feel secure. And guess what? They start to make good decisions right. on their own because it's no longer, I'm fighting you for control. It now becomes, I'm making good decisions because it benefits me as a person, as a child. Taking to ownership me. too mm -hmm. of the situation and of the choices. Yeah, because the, the kids will fight you forever if you try to control them. And then who wins? Nobody wins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so we encourage you to do is give choices, don't argue, be empathetic, and we're going to talk more about these in the series of parenting that we're doing here. Um, we're going to have multiple topics. We're going to try to get one out every week. That's our goal. And we're going to be coming to you. We're going to be giving you these topics to help you survive 2020 as a parent. And so that's what we have for you today. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching.